September 2020, we bought a new dinghy. And we also bought a new outboard engine. We bought it for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the old one is 10 years old. And secondly, because we had the money to be able to do it. And it made sense because it future-proofed our next 10 years on board the boat. There are numerous reasons uh, people choose dinghies. Some people want ribs. Uh, other people want rigid boats so they don't have the problem with tubes puncturing. Some people go down the line of electric outboards, etc. Uh, personally, I like a dinghy that's a decent size. I like to have an engine that's got plenty of power. And I want to be able to do some distances in that dinghy without the fear of it breaking down. And what we've bought fits all of those criteria. So what we've actually bought is a high field CL290 with a folding transom. And the beauty of that folding transom is that we can leave the engine attached to the dinghy when we hoist it on deck, which is going to make our life considerably easier. But it doesn't just end with purchasing the dinghy. We've also had to make lines for lashing the dinghy down. We will make chocks to fit this dinghy on the deck. We've made, or in the process of making, covers for the dinghy to protect it from the UV. We spent an extra thousand euros or so making sure it was hyperlon as opposed to PVC, so the longevity of the tubes is greater. And we will also ensure that this dinghy is protected from abrasion. We will attach wheels to this dinghy because walking the dog, we beach the boat quite a lot. We have to land in places where the dog is permitted and the wheels make sense to protect the engine and to protect the bottom of the dinghy. The dinghy is also aluminium, so we don't get the problem with splintering fiberglass, etc. We can dent the bottom of it without destroying it. So let's take a look at how we went about making our protective cover for this dinghy. Protection from the gingerizer and also protection from the UV. And as you can see it's going to be a little bit baggy so once the material is cut we will actually hem and then pleat this material down the middle so that it closes that gap up completely. So here we have put hemming tape along the edge of where the material will end and also across the top of the tube where the seam of the hyperlon joins. We've marked that with a black pen we're then going to take that plastic sheet away and cut out that shape and then transfer that to the material that we will use for the dinghy cover. And that's currently measuring the tube because from that line pretty much to the seat is a straight cut. So this will be made out of one piece of canvas up to about here somewhere. And then the next bit will be a funky shape, and then a funky shape, and another funky shape, and a whole load of hassle. But we get the shape of the dinghy. The old... mm, maybe to this section here, and then we'll bring it up over the top. So what we're doing at the moment, we're putting hemming tape, which is a double-sided sticky tape, along here. And um, we'll do the same the other side. And then we're going to stick a sheet of plastic to it. And then we're going to mark the sheet of plastic. And then cut the sheet of plastic and use it as a template. That way we get the shape of the dinghy correct. Yeah, with a hem. That's it. No, you should be able to do it off after cuts, I think. So we've currently overlapped the plastic onto the material that we just made. So there's the material we just made, here's our plastic, and then we're marking it with a marker pen. 
and then we'll leave enough material to stitch the new section to the existing section that we've already made. If that makes sense. So we end up with a piece of plastic that mirrors the shape that we have to cut out in the material. So the next part of the process is the cutting department. Cutting department. Hello. Yeah, she's the only one with sharp scissors. I'm not allowed sharp objects at all usually. Um, and the plastic is now laid out onto our bed. That obviously has to be very careful not cut through the bed sheets, which has been done in the past. Um, not by me. <laughs> that pattern will then be um, cut now and then placed on top of the material, which is rolled up back there. And then I will stitch it. And the sewing department is right there. Okay, the heater. Oh, yeah, I've got the heater. Once the material is sewn, it's handed back to the cutting department who then do a dry run test fit on the dinghy and see if we need to make any alterations. As you can see here, there's a few little pleats that potentially need to be made. Um, we double stitch pretty much everything so it's easy to lose any excess material. Work in progress. Then we move on to the next section and don't forget you can simply invert the first piece of material that you make because the other tube is the mirror image of the first one. We've now, we've now got the back section on. This is the first section that we made here. And the next section. And then we will come up here in a minute and we will template to here. We try, I always try and follow the seams. what the cutting room department are doing here. We know we've got the one on the starboard tube correct. But just to check, because they may have made the dinghy slightly different, we've reversed the starboard tube onto the port side to check it fits. That was a classic. Sometimes I feel like my opinion doesn't matter. Like I can just be talked over with impunity. So as I was about to say before Natalie rudely interrupts me like she normally does, we know that this part of the cover is correct because it fits on the starboard part of the tube. We flip it over so that we're using the reverse side and try it on the port tube. And providing it fits, which it did, we can then use the one that we've already made as a template for the second one, which cutting room department are now currently doing. Because the outside edge of this dinghy cover will be under tension, we are adding Velcro flaps under the dinghy handles to hold the rest of the cover in situ. I've no idea how many times we walked from the sewing machine back to the dinghy to try it for size to then decide we wanted to alter it to walk back to the sewing machine. This boat doesn't have as many seams as the old one, so this curve's a little, a little bit awkward. Like taking a sheet of paper and wrapping it around a football, it's not very easy. Just follow where's Wally. So we've sewn the end cap on, the first section is on, the second section is on. Now we're just going to check it to make sure that all the slots and bits and pieces are in the right locations.
These are on the job list as well, aren't they? I need some packing pieces for these though, unfortunately. Because... They don't stand far enough out from there. Making progress. So we've got the the majority of starboard done. The section's sewn on. This section's on, there's just a few pieces of trim, etc. that have to be done there to make that work. Templating the port bow section. Once that's done, we can do this last section here. And then we need to sort out the the strip of material that's going to come down here with the eyelets in it and the hooks. We've got hooks that go underneath this rubber string. Exciting. Another rainy day. So these pieces that we're sewing in at the moment, these small tabs, are for 10x clips and the 10x clips will hold this canvas work to the inside of the bow of the dinghy. Good. So, progress being made with the dinghy cover. Um, we've now got, as you can see, both sides pretty much put together. Front section's now sewn in as well, so all of this lot leads into this. We're gonna tighten this up a little bit, close the seams a bit more. So we put a small pleat into this and we'll close that up to make it a bit tighter. We're going to put some straps down here and some 10x clips, same as we've got on our uh, solar panels. So the 10x clips will hold this in. I'm just marking where you're going to see the straps on. Cool. Um, and then we don't want this rubber rubbing strake being worn away by the dock wall. So we're going to create something the same as we did with the blue dinghy. Right, so the plan is to sew this to the dinghy cover. Um, the bottom bit here will have the eyelets in and the eyelets will come down and attach to the, to the plastic hooks that hook under the rubbing string. And then to protect the hooks, this will come down over the top and it, it will cover up our sins a little bit and just make it look a lot neater, cover up the hooks. And also we'll then, hopefully, if we can find some, uh, we will attach some sort of rope on the outside that will protect it from dock walls. Good plan. That's the plan. Yep. And we, in fairness, we learned a lot from the last one that we made. So we're kind of putting the lessons learned into the new cover. You can see front section's in. We have to make this curved section. This curved section is a bit more tricky, but the front piece is straight, so that's already done. This. Once we've got a bit of tension on that, the cords are in and the seats are in and everything's strapped down properly, it is gonna fit like a glove. Like the shape and where we've pleated it and stuff into here. And it's better than the other one. You just learn, don't you? Well, like you've got the experience from doing the other cover. What did you just say? Had to use the leather rather than the goat skin, but I haven't made a decision on that yet. I you haven't. were given permission to use the goat skin, finally, finally, mm -hmm. and what have you decided? I might, I said, I might, I might put the goat skin on here. I think the goat, the goat skin? I think the goat skin's really cool. No. Not the length. Puppy, it's the goat skin for you. Hey, do some dinner. So I have this old leather jacket 
which I was going to throw it away because I never wear it anymore. It's really old. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's really good leather. This leather is so supple. It is such good quality leather. Um, and I figured I could use it for other projects. So this is what was going to go on parts of the dinghy where there is significant amounts of wear, um, i.e. where the ropes go over the bow, etc. So I'm going to put leather patches into it to um, extend the life of the dinghy cover. Oh no. Nah, this is our last needle. Now we're in trouble. Well, there's a surprise. Our last needle broke. Now we're screwed. We can't get one locally. Uh, we can't order them to come to the island. It's a very difficult postal system here. And um, we need to chase out some needles. Until we can get some needles, the dinghy cover project and the bimini project all on hold. Covers on, back to bed. Yeah. You can fish it. Yeah. Hooking the cover down to the rubbing strip, we used this shock cord because we had it on the boat. You could just easily use normal cord. So here is our idea in fruition. So when we put tension on the shock cord, so when we tension all of this up, these hooks will hold to the rubbing strake and then this piece will come down to cover the hooks so they don't get damaged on the dock wall. We'll then put eyelets into this and then we'll put our rope along We've got a rope along like we've done with all the other stuff we've made. And the rope will protect the cover from dock wood. But we need to go get some rope. Which will be which will be another cycle trip. 13 BA. Cover down. Covers down and hides all of the and be completely invisible. And the more is holding the cover on. So we're left with a few little jobs. <clears throat> Start putting leather. Start putting leather on some of these pieces. So there's leather on these pieces that have got to be done. We're going to add a few pieces up here. We've got to put the clips into this, which we forgot to do when we were doing the eyelets. It's too good. For those that are interested, we are still working on the Bimini. Um, as you remember, we had this frame made way back in November. Uh, it was installed to the boat. We launched the boat because of COVID. Uh, it was unfinished at the time. We've been working on it in the marina. Uh, we broke the needles, as I've showed you earlier, and we were stuck for sewing. We needed some eyelets to get this job finished. We're waiting on those to turn up. When they do, we'll finish the Bimini, and I'll show you the end result. Meanwhile, I like your mask. It's good. You should. Uh, I did turp him. <laughs> We've been vaccinated. Yes. And precautions because of allergies to medication. And you'll be glad to know that the bikes were only superficially damaged, just some scratches.
skin for you, Poppy. No. Small camera. I don't care. It's lovely. I can do this. Now it's a jocko's. Disappointment on her face. God made some heads beautiful, the others he gave hair. Thanks for your help. <laughs>